my, my Falco friends are just like chilling. Two know, lasers from they're, the They're vibing. They're, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, no why didn't my dare hit? I wish it did. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Hi, dare on shield. Come on. Man. Yeah. Uh, speaking of dare, is Espat going to drill the gosh dang heck out of Amsa? I maybe. Um, oh, Winner's Top 32. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. We are We're in, in it. We are in Winner's Top 32. We're witnessing like two top 10 players go at it now. Um, and Espat is really hoping that uh, Amsa didn't get too much warm up from Azel. Yeah. And that I think Azel and Espat play uh, very different foxes in general, too. I know they're both from California, but the play styles are going to be very different, I think, and the approach to the matchup as well. Um, but. Yeah, you have Omsa at 102%, but Omsa taking the first uh, stock there. I bet Espat could be Omsa. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm, I, I, bet mean, he, I bet he could. I mean, every. I feel like Fox is definitely going to be one of the one of the characters. Uh, is going to be the characters to do it, and all the Foxes are crazy. Um, big, big shout out to Espat um, here now, trying to take a game or take the first stock off of Omsa. I should say this game number one. Yeah. So, Azul, I thought, was doing things that were, like, hard to easily see or replicate. Uh -huh. um, so I'm wondering, like, what Espat is going to be doing to be succeeding. Like, that's not... I, I mean, maybe he's looking at Azul and it's like, okay, the, the late timing, okay. Um, the the more creative punishes, and then the, you've got the egg mix-up as well. Yeah, the egg mix-up mix is really important. Um, Azul was just really committed to the no mash. No matter what, it literally cost him a stock. He was like, I'm not going to mash out. Oh, it cost him that game. It did. Yeah. And Esfat mashed out after the first Nair on shield. So it's yeah. very different. Very, very different. Yeah, I, I'm just curious to see, like, uh, oh, wow, single hit of up air actually not killing, just only breaking uh, Yoshi's armor. Man, Amsa is hitting so hard on this edge guard now. Love that 75% angle. and with a pretty solid lead here up a stock. I like that shine out from um, S Fat there to get away from that jab pressure, yeah. but you would have loved to see a wave shine out. Yeah, I really, yeah. If he actually hit the shine correctly, it would have been really, really big. Yeah, uh, maybe it, get another smash. I was, it wasn't fast enough. Yeah, yeah. You got the actual jump. Oh, the wait. I like that a lot. You saw was that. Was that a shine turn? Oh, I don't know. I think so. It was really scary for uh, Amsa there because your shield's about to break, and if uh, S Fat just started like multi shining to break a shield, so Amsa had to do some sort of roll or something. Yeah. Um, good stuff there, but you know, unable to capitalize into a stock and getting Nair air to air there, a little air jousting for Amsa to take the stock. Yes, it is. Wow. Yeah. Amsa up three stocks to one against S Fat. A very different set from the game one of Azul versus Amsa. Yeah, S Fat is looking like he's really struggling to find this kill, and like he's got these extra mix ups to do the setup. Like he's getting grabs, he's getting like kind of weird shines, but the ability to confirm off of it has been lacking. And so what we're seeing is like he's got a bunch of damage from those setups. Amsa's at 200%, but uh, he doesn't have the kill except for when. That was really funny, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Espat, like, didn't even drift. He just, like, put out a bear. Yeah. You hardly ever see just, like, a bear, and then it works. I mean, with an all-gas, no-breaks type playstyle that Amsa has, sometimes the best option is just, just do a, something in place and try to catch him uh, drifting into you. And you saw that there. Espat was able to take a stock. But yeah. that was, like, that was pretty strongly, heavily Amsa favored. And yeah. not only the punish game, but also the neutral. I saw a lot of air-to-airs from Amsa that was just really, really difficult for Espat to kind of get comfortable in his own space, um, really encroaching in with those nares. And, you know, that even is the reason that Amsa lost the stock, was because he was so focused on getting in and yeah. smothering as fast as the backer worked. I actually think, uh, also low-key, that uh, Amsa is all gas, some breaks. Oh, for sure. And that, like... And that, I, and that, I feel like that game was a little bit no breaks, but, yeah, definitely has some breaks. Actually, the, the understated break is that when he goes to Legend Stalls, like, it is like it's a momentum oh, killer. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's a momentum killer. It sort of gets uh, your opponent in the space of like, oh great, I have to like, how long is he going to stay at ledge? I have to dodge these eggs now also, which I don't know. I think they do like eight percent or something. Eight sixteen. Wait, well, let me see. Hit one. I'm to hit one. All right. He hit one there, but we weren't ready to calculate the math there. But yeah, gets yeah, the down yeah. smash anyway, and really good defensive tech from Monster to completely disengage that situation off of that. Out of shield option. He gets the back air. S5 now looking to close out of stock. Back air will start to break the double jump armor, even with a weak hitbox. 
Oh, okay. there, yeah. Nice, good pressure. Esfat, um, knowing that, like, Opsa really doesn't have good options there. Probably the best one is roll to the right, but roll to the left, Esfat is scouting out, and then just staying, Esfat, uh, you know, is, is in position to punish, so. Getting a shine out and looking for a wave shine into a punish, but Opsa just pulling up the shield just in time, not taking any percent off of these punishes. Esfat has really struggled to hit as hard as Omsa has been hitting him. But I feel like this game, Esfat's in much better control yeah, of the neutral. I think absolutely. maybe the flatness of the stage is giving him a lot more comfortability uh, in his own space. That is true. He's not having to deal with Omsa on platforms either. Yeah. Because, like, you wow. can see that... Oh, nice x knight. What a down smash angle, too. You can see that Esfat is getting openings and is in advantageous situations. Oh, the that's mash the out counterplay, yeah. yeah. You prove that you're going to be able to mash out. Ops is going to capitalize on it. And here's the wave shines. Crazy wave shine, actually. Very crispy ledge dash. With, with a walk. Wave shines, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that's an air editor with a double jump armor, the instant double jumps. Also, sick angle. Double jump cancel, sorry. Esfat waited so he didn't get hit by the egg oh. and does a low angle, too. And that nair was crazy for moms to send out and kill. Um, so the thing that I'm noticing is like, yeah, the stage is better. Um, he has been getting a lot more openings. Oh, nice coming on the top. Uh, but what's really going to make this into like Esfat just holding on and hoping to like being convincing, I think is getting more off the drill. Uh, seeing what he can do off of like one of those drills, or maybe even like even maybe a running shine, uh, would mean like he would be able to keep up with Amsa's punish. Because right now it's just like okay, he gets a few hits and then Amsa nares him off the stage, and like yeah. the, he's he's got too many chances to edge guard. Even with a multiple hit, um, even with a multiple hit wave shine, it's still like not enough in a lot of those situations to keep up because it's. Uh, like, we'll say this a lot, I feel like. We've said this a lot in a lot of matchups. It's like, even though you're winning neutral a lot, that punish game can really skew the favor of a match. And SMS winning neutral pretty well, but so is Opsa. So it's becoming a thing of, I really feel like it's a punish game. That's interesting. Yeah. I I'm thinking, like, um, I'm thinking Opsa's getting uh, a lot of, like, <laughs> his neutral wins off of this command grab E or whatever. Yeah. Um, that was something we were seeing a lot at like pound and like. Ooh! Opsa steals the ledge away. Uh, he's getting it off of. Uh, we saw him do it at pound and summit, but like now he's opening games with with the E command grab and like finding. I, I feel like this is a new development um, that's only been like been employed for the like the past year or so or like that's something that's come out of COVID um, is that he is going in almost like an empty hop grab with like a, uh, a double jump cancel or a double jump drift in eat. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I think it's it's really interesting that we got the um, Azzle before this because it really magnet, uh, like it really Highlights. amplified it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah. like, oh, look, this is the counterplay to it. So we're noticing, hey, wait a minute, Azzle's able to counterplay because he's getting hit with it a lot. Um, mm. Amps is really consistent at getting it now. Um, you yeah, see it, it there, it yeah. Again. It's an anti air, bro? Yeah, it, it, it does a lot because like Nair, you know, Nair, you have to commit to a lot of drift for that neutral beat kind of puts you right into place where a lot of players will try to, I feel like, maybe overshoot or stuff you out. That neutral beat stops your momentum and gets an eat out. That's such an interesting mix-up in neutral versus Fox or Omsa. I definitely would not have guessed, like, because it is looking really, really impactful now, at least on this game three, but I would not have expected, like, hey, what's, uh, you know, people always say Yoshi has uh, got so much more to be developed. Uh, more to like optimize. I did not expect neutral B to be uh, one of those. Have Yoshi actually like, yeah. lay eggs on his own. <laughs> not only is he throwing the eggs, but he's also making you the egg. Yeah. And uh, guess what? You're struggling to be born. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're S back in, opening there with those shines, yeah. gets a backer, but didn't find a connection to do anything meaningful. I like that wait in place, like yeah. similar to that backer that took the second stock on game one, where it's like you just wait in place for Omsa to commit to an approach. I feel like Omsa's pushing the docket a lot in terms of who's starting the neutral or yeah. the scrap situation, but yeah, that was. Very convincing. For yeah, awesome. Sfat was, I feel like, at least literally in those last 30 seconds, started to do some last second, like, interesting adaptations. Yeah. Where I think it was like, okay, I'm down 2 0, I'm down a few stocks, like, I'll do some, like, weird stuff, not force it. But uh, those actually would have helped out. Yeah, I, think, I really, I really think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Definitely uh, Amsa really setting the pace uh, in terms of, like, initiation of hits. Um, similar to what we saw between Fiction and um, J-Flex. Yeah. Yeah. Which, 
I don't know, like Yoshi versus Fox, I don't know if uh, Yoshi should really be dictating. No, definitely uh, not. Yeah, but but I think S Fat's like reactive, really tight play style would lend itself more to like yeah. waiting it out, but Amsa's uh, hits the gas too hard and uh S Fat can't uh, can't accommodate, you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. I know. Ooh. I'm really excited. I'm really yeah, excited. Yeah, so I, I turn uh, our we we have the what's next up and it's gonna be June Belt versus Magi. PJ, it is Doc O'Clock. Doc O'Clock. It's Doc O'Clock. Best Doctor Mario. You know what this?